Look at all this fucking snow. Jesus. Look at it all. Sweet home, Pennsylvania. Even Callie's like, I don't even want to fucking try this shit. Come on, baby. So yeah, Pennsylvania has declared a state of emergency because the snow is so bad. I've been snowed in for like... It's like a day. I haven't left the house and since today's Sunday. I haven't left the house since I think Thursday or Friday. But it's all good. I'm going to take a quick shower and I'm going to make a video that nobody wants to see because it's not fucking Lord Noble. <laughs> Oh, hey. Didn't see you there. Yeah. I was just relaxing in my room. You know, snowy day outside. All alone. Oh, oh what's that? Oh, y an intruder? You want to have your way with me? Not today, son. Get fucked, boy. Yes. Hello, everybody. It's your friendly neighborhood uh, guy that doesn't do bad ads. Episode 70. Shut the fuck up. I'm really bored. And there's a blizzard outside. And I can't go anywhere. I'm not here to argue politics with you. I'm not here to fight people. I am a bored hillbilly who has nothing to do and I want to show off my gun collection to YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to show and uh, tell uh, Sunday it yeah. So we'll start off small I guess. This here is my daily carry. It is a Taurus TCP 380. Um, it has a little single stack, six round magazine. Very cute gun. Very nice little popper. I don't know. I, I just I I feel better with with a gun, just because you know it, it's legal in Pennsylvania. It's legal um, in most places in America. But um, over the summer, man, I started going to this town that I used to live in, and uh, the one time I was there with my lady friend. And we're just walking down the street, and like this is like a town of like you know two thousand people. It's like no big deal, but we're just walking down the street, and this fucking crazy ass bitch comes up to us, and she's just like, "Do you know where I am? Do you know where I am?" We're just like, "Sorry," and she's like, "Oh fuck you," and like walked away. And then another time, um, me and my lady friend were riding through there on my bike, and we were at a red light, and there was like a fucking bunch of sketchy looking dudes at the corner. And they're all like, cat, like fucking saying shit to us and just being sketchy. And I'm like, I gotta protect my lady friend. I, I, I'm not good in a fight. I'm a fucking pussy. So I went out and got this. Uh, I think this cost me right around three hundred dollars after tax and everything. So super nice gun. This slide here is all black stainless, um, so it'll never rust. You can touch it all you want. I mean, it's never gonna, you know, rust or degrade or anything. And uh, the whole thing weighs like maybe a couple ounces. It's a very light gun. It shoots super well. It has these like fixed plastic sights on here, and uh, you can't adjust them, but they they do work really well. But yeah, Taurus TCP 380. I had to break this gun in a little bit. I'm glad I did because I went out right after I bought it, and I put around I put a magazine through it, and it jammed like three times. So. If you ever get a defense gun, um, you just make sure that you go out and you break it in because they're these guns are pretty they have pretty stiff tolerances. I mean they're not like you know old AKs. I mean they they make them pretty precise and you gotta work them in. You know especially if you're relying on this thing to possibly save your life, you want to make sure it functions properly. This right here is the Granddaddy Mac. This is my probably one of the, like the most favorite guns I ever bought. This here, oh bitch. It's so pretty. I love this gun so much. This here is my Rock Island 1911. Uh, this one here in particular is chambered in 9mm. And I got it like that for a reason. Because um, a lot of, most 1911s are chambered in a round called 45 ACP. Um, and it's not like a very particularly like high recoil round. But it does kick pretty substantially. But when you get this gun chambered in a 9mm, the gun itself is so heavy and the round is so light, there's virtually no recoil when you're shooting this thing. It's almost like shooting a 22. But when I got this, I got it on sale for about 700. Cover my ears. Cover your ears, lady friend. Uh, I meant 700 
pesos. And it does come with some goodies. It comes with a skeletonized trigger. It comes with a... It came with the ambidextrous safety. It came with these adjustable night sights, which are actually really nice. But um, it was all tactical out. It had like this really like crazy grip on there. It had a mag well, and it had uh, the ambidextrous safety. But I actually went to a gunsmith. I had him change the safety out for a standard 1911 safety, and then I changed the grips and I took the mag well off. So it's now it's just like more of your classic, you know. 1911. If you're in the market for a 1911, um, and you're like, I don't want to spend fucking th like two grand on a 1911, just get a Rock Island. They're just as good. Trust me. They have. It's safe. It's safe. I checked it. They say it is a very crisp trigger. Very nice gun. Totally recommend it. This right here is my Plink Daddy Ruger 1022. As you can see, I've done a few upgrades to it. <laughs> they don't come like this. This one came with a wood stock it was plain Jane I've probably put like 10,000 rounds to this thing honestly it uh, fires a 22 short rifle well, I mean long rifle what am I saying comes with a 10 round rotary mag but um, this this here is a uh, pro mag um, stock it has these Picatinny rails up here a super lightweight has a folding stock and uh, has a nice pistol grip as opposed to like a normal grip but it aims really well and uh, you don't have to change out the sights or anything either, which is really nice because some of these stocks you get and you got to change a bunch of shit on them to make them fit, and I didn't want that. But uh, this here is just a like a AR-15 style sling I got. You just put it around your neck, and then the gun just kind of hangs, hangs out in your the front of you. And then whenever you want to shoot it, you just pull up and shoot it. So yeah, super fun little gun if you are into 22s. I mean, you don't have a 1022. What are you doing? This here is my Mossberg 500 12 gauge. Um, I got this for my 12th birthday. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> um, we out here, folks. I was 12 years old, and I was like, I really want a shotgun. I went to the store, and of course, I was like, ah, it's tactical. It's cool. So I got the one with the folding stock and the pistol grip and everything, which, I mean, it's a super nice gun. These Mossbergs, they're just, they're virtually indestructible. I mean, I've shot this thing so many times. It has very little signs of rust or anything. There's wear on it, which I think is just cool. I think it adds character. But, um, yeah, these are fun little guns. You can get them generally pretty cheap, too. Um, I think every person, if you're into guns, should have a Mossberg. A nice little Mossberg 500, perhaps. This here is my Winchester Model 94 3030. I got this for my 14th birthday, um, but yeah, really nice gun. I, I love 94s. I love 3030s. They're just such hard hitters. <laughs> you can like, you shoot at something with a 3030 and it just like decimates it. Very, uh, it's pretty slow moving around, but it's a big old round, and when it hits, it's just like whoa. Yeah, this one here, I I, I checked the serial numbers on it, and it's from. January of 1986 so it's a little bit of an older gun um, I know that if you want like the uh, the super nice version of this you have to go pre 1964 but like we got this gun for I think it was like $200 this here was my uh, 15th birthday present from my papa uh, this is a Ma <laughs> Remington 700 243 and I got this gun because I loved COD 4 I really like the R700 in that game, and I always wanted one, so I got one. But they're, they're really nice shooters. This one has a really nice Nikon Pro Staff scope on it. It's like seven times zoom, but uh, this thing was a nail driver. It's a really, really, really accurate gun. I don't shoot it too much because 243 is like a dollar fifty around. Sometimes you can find it cheaper, but I don't really like shooting this fucking expensive ass round all the time. So mostly just sits in the safe and I usually just get it out every now and again, but probably never sell it. Probably going to stay with me forever. This here was my uh, 13th birthday present. <laughs> I usually got a gun for my birthday because that's all I ever wanted back then. Um, my dad would be like, do you want money or do you want a gun? And I'd be like, I want a gun. But this here is a, um, it's a 1939 Mosin Nagant very popular gun a lot of people know about this from video games and everything but 
they made millions of these during their production running so they're honestly virtually worthless <laughs> Uh, when we got this gun, we got this gun right here from Dunham Sporting Goods. It came with a ban oh, it came with a bayonet. Uh, I think it came with like 50 rounds of ammo, and it came with like a pouch to carry the ammo and a sling. And we got this gun. I'm not even shitting you for 85 dollars with all that. This is back in like, um, I guess it would have been like 2008 or so, but still, it's a hell of a deal. <laughs> I don't really like this gun. I don't like to shoot it either because. I, I kind of get the feeling that one day these are going to be pretty expensive guns. I've heard stories of people online that said, you know, back in the 50s you could go to JCPenney's and get out of here. <laughs> like back in the 50s you could go to JCPenney's and get an M1 Garand for like, you know, 50 bucks because there were so many of them. They were like surplus guns. But nowadays they're worth like two grand and up because, you know, they're, they're rare. So I, I kind of feel like I should hang on to this and just keep it like pristine. I don't think this one's ever seen circulation. Uh, I, I just I don't think it's ever been in combat because it's pristine. Just about I mean there's no marks on it. There's no dings, no dents. It probably sat in a crate for 70 years and then they just sent them out to retailers to sell them. So yeah, I'm probably gonna hang on to this. It might be worth something when I'm like 70, but we'll see. This here is the first gun I ever bought when I was 18 years old. Um, if you didn't know, in America, when you're 18, you can buy rifles and shotguns, and then when you're 21, you can buy handguns. A lot of misconceptions about that for some reason. But yeah, that's how it is. This here is a 1943 M1 Garand 30-06, <laughs> and it's awesome. Uh, this is a really cool gun. It's, it's called field grade, which means that it's beat to fuck, and it's not in good shape. But um, it's cycles every time it functions flawlessly it's beautiful and it has a story which I think is really cool so you know when I bought it they, they were like yeah if you just take some sandpaper to this and you know put some tongue oil on there it'll look real nice I'm just like why the fuck would I do that it looks great the way it is it's got that real nice like natural battle wear kind of thing going but yeah it's a super nice gun to shoot <laughs> They're pretty fucking heavy, you know, and I, I was kind of think about it, like when I'm like out shooting this thing, I'm like, man, some like 18 year old kid probably drugged this across Europe, you know, um, but yeah, it, it's just, it's an experience to shoot an old gun like this, you know, with a lot of life behind it, but yeah, um, these are, you know, obviously very famous guns for the, the ping, which I have an empty clip here, I will demonstrate that for you. You ready? Fucking right. Oh, it's cool as hell. I'm not trying to like, you know, I'm just trying to flex, but like, I got this for about a thousand dollars um when I turned 18, and I haven't seen any around ever since. Uh, I've, you know, very rarely do I see an M1 Garand in stores. They're pretty rare guns. A lot of people hoard them too. Some people could just buy like fucking 20 of them and be like, oh, I have 20 M1 Garands. It's like cool. Why don't you fucking sell some of them? <laughs> But uh, I've I haven't really seen a lot. I've seen a few like when I traveled like farther away. But uh, usually you can find them around a thousand dollars if if they're like a really weird serial number. They may be like you know more like two thousand dollars. Last but not least, my motherfucking boomstick. Hell yeah, this right here is a um it's a it's a JW two thousand uh hammered double barrel shotgun chambered in 20 gauge now ever since I played Red Dead Redemption 2 I just had this fucking hankering for a double barrel shotgun and uh, I've always like I've always liked them because of Doom and like you know uh, Evil Dead and all that but I've never really I, well okay let me read it I got one I got a an Ithaca double barrel shotgun and I literally took it home and I shot it and then it wouldn't open up like it was completely closed so I took it back to the person I bought it off of. It was like a uh, gun shop. And I'm like, hey, this gun isn't working anymore. And they're like, it was a used gun. It's sold as is. Sorry, nothing we can do for you. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I took it to a gunsmith. And I swear to God, I traded, I gave the gunsmith a case of beer to fix my gun. <laughs> and he kind of fixed it, but then it started fucking up again. So I just eventually sold it for like a 50 bucks. But, um,.
Yeah, I was at a I was at a store trying to get rid of this old like bird shotgun I had that I never used anymore. And I went in there and I saw this gun and I'm like, is that Chamberlain twenty gauge by any chance? Like, yeah it is. So went up there and then I, I asked him about my trade in for my bird shotgun and I walked out the door with this thing after the trade in. This cost me about eighty bucks. So it, it's it's pretty fun little gun. I mean it's it's pretty neat. I like the I like the external hammers and uh, I just like how little it is and compact. But this is just like such a fun gun to just go around and just blast stuff with. I mean you just fucking walk around, you see like a half dead tree, just shoot it and the fucking tree falls down. It's really fun. But yeah, I really really like this gun a lot. Um, yeah, uh, I I haven't had any problems with it. A lot of people get kind of sketched out from these because they're made in China and they're like kind of sketchy but I never had any issues with it and I highly recommend them especially if you can get them for as cheap as I did well guys thank you for pretending to be interested for the last like 15 or 20 minutes however long it took me to get through all this shit but yeah um, I'm just kind of I was just kind of bored today I'm sorry uh, I know this wasn't probably the most exciting video but sometimes I just like to talk my shit and just you know say stuff and make some vids but yeah that's pretty much it guys I'll see you later Bye.